What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video here on NBA 2K. So yesterday in honor of Carl D. Towns performance yesterday, I kind of want to do something I've never really done before and I thought it could be some fun and I've been suggested it before. So I thought, hey, you know what? We might as well try it. So today we're going to be doing a 10 year Minnesota Timberwolves rebuild. Now, before we get into this video, though, guys, if you do enjoy this idea and want to see more of these, definitely let me know by leaving a like and, of course, subscribe if you're new. It helps out a lot. Thank you guys for that. Basically, right now, as we sit, we are currently in the year of 2022, so we won't be stopping this video until we're in the year 2032. So, uh, this will be interesting. For this first season, obviously, we already kind of have, you know, past the half season mark. I'm not going to do much of anything. So, uh, we could see a lot of things going down in this video. We could see ourselves being contenders. We could see ourselves kind of being tank you no know, contributor i don't know like this video could go a number of ways we could be a contender at one point and a bottom feeder at the next point that's basically what i was trying to say i just couldn't get the words out correctly but regardless let's wait the rest of the season and uh let's see where we finish out and then after that the rebuild will start the next 10 years so at the end of the season Giannis wins in peace scotty barnes wins for gear drummond i mean we're gonna be seeing a lot of this so i'm probably not gonna look too much at these to be honest with you i'm gonna be more or you know more or less focused on the timberwolves so for this first season Good start to our uh, rebuild process here. We ended up actually making the playoffs as a six seed. Get to go up against the Memphis Grizzlies. But uh, we have Anthony Edwards, who's going to be here for a long time. Plan on keeping him throughout the video, of course. Carl Anthony Towns, 26 years old. Plan on keeping him as well, if possible. D'Angelo Russell, somebody I could look to move on from. Not going to lie to you. And then uh, Malik Beasley, 15. Nasir, 12. And 8 from Joe Noel. And Torian Prince was 6. So the only thing I hate about going too far into 2K is that sometimes... The rookies coming in just don't make any sense, but uh, we'll try to work with it. So somebody current round against the Memphis Grizzlies, and we are going to lose in six. So unfortunately lost in six games to uh, the Men uh, Memphis Grizzlies, but hey, it's fine. Because like I said, we got nine more years to figure this thing out. So Golden State Warriors go on to win it all. And this is going to be the very first offseason of this 10-year process. So let's go ahead and see what we can get here to start things off. So with our 20th pick in the draft, we're going to have to try to get something that'll help us out, obviously, for the next 10 years. I don't know. We're just kind of spitballing. So we got Chris Finch as the head coach. I'm going to fill this out, and then we're going to go to draft night. So with the 20th overall pick, we definitely need to make a good decision here to start things off. We have Dyson Daniels on the board, which actually might be the guy I end up taking out Butte Champ as well. But I'm going to take Dyson Daniels with this 20th overall selection. I also have a second round pick that I'll, you know, I wouldn't mind selecting here as well. We have Lewis, we have Keon Ellis, we got Christian Braun. There's a lot of things we could go here, but I literally just had this guy in yesterday's video and he ended up being really good for us. So I'm actually going to take him as well. And just like that, came out of the draft looking pretty good. Wendell Moore, we also had a few other second round picks. It wasn't, uh, okay, L on my part. We got Vuk Savic, okay, interesting. And then uh, Och, I don't think I could say that last name, but regardless, we got four brand new rookies coming in. Nas Reed, Dylan Noel, and then of course, qualifying offers meant Kenley Wright, the fourth uh which I, yeah that's the fourth okay and then josh Kogi, which is actually somebody i wouldn't mind bringing back so uh let's go to free agency though so to start things off i kind of want to look at this roster obviously so minnesota's already kind of in a good you know good standing great direction d'angelo russell jordan mclaughlin you got anthony edwards malik beasley's large contract jalen noel you got uh you know obviously a couple guys we just brought in from the draft and then you got window more small ford Jander Vanderbilt and Jaden McDaniels, and of course, Carly Towns and Nas Reed. So uh, I'm definitely looking to improve the small forward position. We have Malik Beasley's contract. I like Wendell Moore, but I don't want him to start immediately. And then obviously center is going to be good for now. So I think with our first, uh, you know, thing we want to do in this video is we want to accomplish making a trade probably involving Malik Beasley. I won't trade D'Angelo Russell just yet. That's something I do maybe plan on doing but for now we're actually just going to focus on trading malik beasley for like a small forward or something so i want to start off this video with a uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of a bang so malik beasley ochai for 2025 and og for og and onobi do they accept this they do we got og on an obd break be our brand new starting small forward here in minnesota great defensive player coming over which is something minnesota could definitely use i love that addition and then McDaniels and Vanderbilt. I'm not really sure if I want either of them starting at four, you know, power forward. They're both pretty young, so maybe we could roll with them and it would be fine. But I do love the addition, of course, of OG and Onobi coming up here. And then, of course, a point guard, Jordan McLaughlin, backing up D'Angelo Russell. So I think that is going to be our first offseason. I don't think I'm going to do anything in free agency. I think I'm actually ready to just go straight towards the next season. I'm going to mess with some shot tendencies a little bit. Uh, Carly Towns I want to boost up. Uh, OG and Onobi might boost up a little bit as well. But I love that first edition of this team. 
and I think it's an excellent start to this rebuild process. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props website that allows you to go over or unders on NBA players. That way you watch the game and have a lot of fun with it. So for example, this is what it would look like on desktop. Also kind of looks like this obviously on your phone, but you just simply pick two, three, four, five players, however many you want to choose. You just simply click over, over, under, under, whatever you want to do. And then you can either three times your money, five times your money, even 10 times your money, as long as you get all four right. Even if you wanted to do power plays or flex plays, it really does not matter. Either way, it works out however you want it to. So if you guys want to join Prize Fix, the link's in the description. Use my promo code CRUSHABLES when you sign up. So at the end of the season, Trey Young wins MVP. Paulo is your rookie of the year. Six man Christian Wood, Giannis Fence player. John Tamar's most improved. And Steve Kerr is your coach of the year. So uh, let's get straight into the playoffs as we finish up as the third seed in the West, which is obviously really nice. Player stats wise, Anthony Edwards, 26 points. Carly Towns, 22. DeAndre Russell, 18 and a half. And then 13 from OG Nobi, 12 from Nas Reed, and then 10 from uh, Jim Noel and five from Jared Vanderbilt. So this was the rotation we were running. I didn't really show it, but you know, basically Vanderbilt pissed for some reason. I don't know why. Minnesota was a great city, but I don't know where I want to be. All right, I guess you can I'll be upset about that, but whatever. So playing the Utah Jazz in round one, is this going to be a year where we're going to win our first championship or not? Or maybe even win a playoff series? That's something we would love to accomplish as well. Somebody current round against Utah, and that is going to be correct. We do beat the Utah Jazz in four games. Now we get to play the New Orleans Pelicans, Schroeder, McCollum, Ingram, Zion, Valanciunas. Obviously, the Pelicans are probably going to be a problem throughout the video. But hey, we'll, we'll give it our old college try. So many current round. And we actually did push them to seven, but we did not get past them. So that is an unfortunate part. So New Orleans Pelicans go on to beat the Hornets in seven games. And now we kind of have another offseason ahead of us where we're going to be making some decisions for sure. You know, second round is definitely awesome, but obviously we want to be better than that. We want to win a damn championship, make it to the Western Conference Finals, and uh, be a successful team. So is there anything... Standing out to me, I believe uh, DeAndre Russell is actually a free agent this offseason. We also have our 20th pick here in this uh, draft. So let's go ahead and see what he gets. We have Dylan Mitchell, Chris Livingston. I think I'm going to take Chris Livingston for some small forward depth. And that'll be nice. We'll have Chris Livingston. And uh, we'll sign both these guys as well. Player options, we have Anthony Edwards, Wendell Moore, McDaniel. So Anthony Edwards is still on his rookie contract, which I think is uh, you know something we should be taking advantage of. So DeAndre Russell... He's got $16 million coming to him potentially. So that is something. And then I don't think we're going to be able to afford a point guard. Yeah, we're not going to be able to really afford a uh, point guard. It doesn't look like. So point guards, I mean, it would be crazy to go after like John Moran, obviously. But we're not going to be able to afford John Moran. All right, we're actually not too far off from being able to afford John Moran, it looks like. So we have Darius Garland out here. We have John Moran. So obviously, would be really awesome to bring one of those guys in. Uh, but I don't know, man. I mean... That's, this is where you take advantage of the cap situation. But I think Garland and John Morant would both get matched. I don't even know if it's worth trying to free up the money to do so. But we're not that far off. Now, one thing I wouldn't mind doing is actually like a sign-in trade thing with D'Angelo Russell. So instead of, you know, shooting for the stars and think I'm going to get one of those guys, I'm going to do a sign-in trade with D'Angelo Russell. Something he has, uh, you know, definitely been a part of before, if I'm not mistaken. Nas Reed, we're going to not uh, renounce him. I would like for him to be my backup center going forward. So D'Angelo Russell... We're going to sign him, but I don't plan on keeping him. I'm going to re-sign Nas Reed probably to five years. Since we are doing a 10-year rebuild, I'm just going to try to keep... Okay, we're still able to sign. I was about to say, I did not mean to renounce him, but whatever. So uh, we got Nas Reed, and then I think that's going to be it. So we're going to look at the potential, like I said, of trading D'Angelo Russell, which is something I definitely want to entertain. So we'll, we'll see what I can replace him with. I'm not sure if there's going to be anything that great, but we'll definitely take a look. So this is going to be kind of weird, but I'm going to try to get a D'Angelo Russell for Lonzo Ball swap just because I think Lonzo Ball brings a little bit more we need to the table like defense and obviously he's younger. So D'Angelo Russell for Lonzo Ball be more of a swap uh, or something like that. So uh, I would probably have to throw in like window more maybe. So let's see if they accept that. They don't. Okay. And I have a couple of other young guys I could maybe throw in here. So we got McLaughlin. You got Josh. We just got the drafts. And just like that, we got Lonzo Ball. So that's going to be my other addition. 25 years old he's got a one year left on his contract but i think he brings more defense to the table which is something we definitely could use so i'm, I'm happy with that addition and vanderbilt for some reason is still pissed off or whatever I, I still like him so guard the towns nas reed and just like that that is going to be it so uh the contract extension deadline is going to be important as well because obviously you got some important free agents with lonzo ball now and carly towns but another step in the right direction some of you guys are probably going to think that I edited this and made this the way it was, but I can literally promise you I did not. 24 points and 10 assists for Lonzo Ball 
winning MVP, 47% from three. I, sp I put that on everything. I did not do that, I promise. But wow, I mean, we were the first in the West, but never seen Lonzo Ball win MVP before. So that is uh, crazy. Lonzo Ball, all NBA first team. So that was a great addition to Minnesota. I didn't even mess with the shot tendency either. So uh, I guess I'm in this file. Shot tendency must be boosted or something. But hey, we're the first seed. Lonzo Ball wins MVP. Second leading scorer next to Anthony Edwards. It sounds like to me, Lonzo Ball was a great addition to the team. And one thing we did do is we also extended uh, Carly Towns at the contract extension deadline. He was willing to sign one. So I thought it made sense to go ahead and sign him. OG and Obi 13 and 11 from Nasri. So there, there's going to be some important free agents this offseason. So it's kind of important that we actually win the championship now. Playing the Denver Nuggets in round one. So we got to round two last year. So we're kind of hoping we can get to the Western Conference Finals to take that next jump. Now I get to play the Portland Trailblazers, Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, Josh Hart, Liddell, Paulo Boncaro, and Jeremy Grant. So many current round against Portland, and we beat them in five. So just like that, we have ourselves a really good team. And obviously, I haven't really shown the rotation in this video. But for some reason, Vanderbilt is just not happy here. I don't know, man. Don't know what I did to him. But regardless, now I get to play the Golden State Warriors. So this will be a tough one. But hey, we made a leapfrog from last year. It's my current round, and we are going to beat the Warriors in six. And now we are in the NBA Finals going up against the Boston Celtics, who have Derek White, Jalen Brown, Tatum, Otto Porter, Robert Williams, and Marcus Smart. So many current round, and we are going to lose in six. So we made it to the NBA Finals, lost to the Boston Celtics. You know what? It's unfortunate, but we could still come back and be fine. So, uh, you know, we got to the Finals, which is a good step in the right direction, but losing is always heartbreaking because you never know when you're actually going to get, you know, be back to that point. So... Very disappointing inning as the New York Knicks have back-to-back -back round one and round two. And then the Thunder have number three, six, and seven. So the Thunder and the Knicks are about to be really good here soon. So we'll definitely have to keep that in mind. But uh, thankfully, the Knicks are on the other side of the conference. But we do have to deal with the Thunder. But Nick Nurse. Okay, so we can actually... I feel like I should just keep Chris Finch, though, just because he's done a great job. So I'm just going to keep Chris Finch because, like I said, he's done an excellent job here. So there's no reason you know, really move on from him. So I'm just going to get a guard guru. And then uh, draft night is going to get crazy. And uh, this free agency class is going to get crazy because I know for a fact we have a lot of good free agents. Uh, so, Coleman, I'll just go ahead and sign player options. Lonzo Ball declines. Ojinobi actually had a player option, which he accepted, which is actually kind of a blessing. Low key. Daniels is coming back, uh, which is somebody who hasn't even cracked the rotation, I think. And then Jared Vanderbilt, Anthony Edwards, and Jaden McDaniels will try to bring all of them back. Of course, we have to pay Lonzo Ball, who just freaking won MVP for crying out loud. So I don't know what his contract is going to look like now. Uh, but Anthony Edwards, 100%, we want to bring back as well. So Lonzo Ball, probably after winning MVP, is going to get like a mass contract. So we can sign Lonzo Ball for the next five years. We are not renouncing Anthony Edwards. I don't know what we're thinking about. So I'm going to make sure we don't renounce those guys. That would just be plain stupid. So let's not do that. And then... There we go. Anthony Edwards finally gets a contract. Only four-year offer. So I would have loved to max him out five years, but I knew if I signed him, moratorium was going to glitch. I didn't really want to have to deal with that. So Anthony Edwards, Lonzo Ball are back. And then uh, last but not least, I mean, I think I'm just going to go with McDaniels because, uh, like I said, Vanderbilt wasn't feeling us. So he comes back on his qualifying offer. Sure, why not? But McDaniels only 23 years of age is going to be, I think, a solid starter here. So um, if we take a look at the rotation just to be safe, Lonzo. So it's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, we pretty much have a full rotation already. So if Vanderbilt comes back as qualifying offer, that's fine. But I'm not gonna lose sleep over him. So player progression, Edwards, and then Lonzo Ball, Carly Town. So basically same team. But like I said, we mentioned the finals last year. So I'm just gonna try to rely on development and hope that this next year goes better for us. We've taken some nice steps in the right direction, but this year, obviously. The next step is winning a championship because we've already made it to the finals. So another season of Lonzo Ball winning back-to-back -back MVPs. Awesome stuff for Mr. Lonzo Ball. Um, 62 and 20 on the year. Again, All-NBA first team. Lonzo Ball is just a stud, I guess. And then All-NBA second team, All-NBA third team. So Anthony Edwards and Lonzo Ball is the backcourt of the future for Minnesota. 26 points. 20. Lonzo Ball, our leading scorer, is kind of insane. But hey, I'll take it. Whatever. 23 points from Towns, 26 from Edwards, and 26 from Lonzo Ball. OG and Obi, someone we're going to have to resign this offseason if we choose to do so. Depends how much money he wants. And then Towns and then Dyson Daniel. So we have uh, Carly Towns, Edwards, and Lonzo Ball all locked up for the foreseeable future, which is honestly awesome. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how much Carly Towns goes down in overall. Hopefully not too much. I mean, I don't want it to be a situation where we might have to move on from him. But hey, like I said, we made it to the finals last year. So that's definitely what we're looking to do this year. Anything less than that is going to be disappointing. Somebody current round against Portland, and we are off to a good start beating them in five. But now we get to play the Oklahoma City Thunder, who obviously are going to get better throughout the whole video with all the draft picks they have. Somebody current round, 
and we are going to beat them in six that was honestly scary but we get to play the warriors who we actually beat last year in the west Conference finals they added some bonus to the mix it might occur around and we are going to lose in six so still no championship we've gone and competed but it just still hasn't been where we need it to be so what do we do to change that is the question i don't know it's a good freaking question because i think we have ourselves a really good roster it's just not leading to the championship quite yet so um i guess the only thing i could really think about is upgrading that power forward position or do we just think chris finch isn't the guy for us i don't know what do we want to do i mean the fact i mean getting the west Conference finals is always great but i don't think i could afford mike malone even if i tried which i might be able to but do i want to gamble and that's the question no, I'm not going to. I mean, make it to the West Conference Finals year after year is still successful in its own right. So, I mean, I, I don't think it, it makes sense to move on necessarily. So, we're just going to go straight to rookie signing because I believe we don't even have our first round pick this year, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally wrong about that. Um, rookie signing, yeah, we, we need to have a first round pick because we traded it for OG and Obi, I believe. So, Dyson Daniels, Fresh Livingston are two contributors we could definitely keep. DeAndre Balmero and then Vuk, Vucevic or Vukovic, however you say his name. And of course, our important free agent is OG on Anobi. Um, he is expecting $15 million, which isn't crazy in my opinion. And Jared Vanderbilt, I don't know how he came, you know, got back on the team, but uh, I think I do want to bring OG and Obi back. Four years, $12 million, not too much of an ask. So 3 and D player that, you know, is important to have on roster. So uh, OG and Obi, nice role player for us. I definitely want him back. And then we should get Neandro Barmero back on his restricted qualifying offer, maybe. And so, like I said, the only thing I could see upgrading is the power forward position but i do like vendor or mcdaniels i feel like we have great role players so i just don't really want to upgrade the roster really i mean the only thing maybe we could look into is obviously maybe getting some other guards so uh or some better backup guards i guess so londe williams maybe will sign to like a nice four-year deal be our backup point guard for the foreseeable future and then vanderbilt i don't really want back just because he has been really weird about uh, how he feels about us so um, Leandro Barmero, though, is somebody I would like back. So we'll sign him to like a three-year deal. So uh, Leandro Barmero is back. And then Vucevic will probably sign as well. So player progression. Another year where we didn't do too much. But like I said, I really am in love with what we built here. So don't really want to change too much. I really like what we have. We have back-to-back -back MVP Lonzo freaking ball. So I don't really want to change too much. We're just going to go into this next season and hope it works out. We've done that pretty much. But like I said... It, it, this roster is built nicely i don't even know if there's a 20 26 draft class that exists um but there is it looks like so i imagine after 2026 there's probably not a 2027 draft class but i guess you never know um rotation is looking relatively the same uh looks just like this mcdonald's is starting power forward which i love so let's go ahead and see how the season goes and like i said the goal is to win a championship we haven't done that yet so this time it's not lonzo ball who wins mvp it's actually Lamelo ball instead so uh we're not counting on that but again first season in the west it has not meant anything so far though so we've made it to the west conference finals made it to the nba finals lonzo ball kind of took a step back he's like you know what this year i'm not trying to win mvp so um rotation is still fantastic let's see if we get to play the sacramento kings of all teams we definitely uh i want to make this a series though if we do like 10-year rebuilds on a lot of teams sacramento kings would be an interesting one to do just because obviously how they're you know how they've gone so far but somebody current round against sacramento and uh maybe they heard me talking never mind we beat them in six okay now you can play the houston rockets jd davison jalen green Derek whitehead jalen johnson uh curse of and then jay and ivy they've built a really good roster here in houston somebody current round against houston and we lose in seven wow okay we are not going to be winning a championship in this video it looks like get eliminated in the second round i think that would have to mean you have to change the staff and i think that's going to lead to chris finch exiting this uh staff so chris finch you've been great but if there's one thing i'm going to change it is going to be the staff i think we're going to you know kind of clean house a little bit we're going to keep our guard guru but head coach we definitely need somebody different because it has not worked out would we be able to get quinn snyder i usually am never able to get him but i'm going to try we can get quinn snyder as our head coach which i absolutely love him obviously so we're going to fill the rest of this out now they have quinn snyder as our head coach and then we'll be going to free agency again and I don't really know if we're going to do anything crazy, but we got to do something because it's just not working. We got a new head coach, which is awesome. But other than that, the roster maybe needs a little bit of an overhaul. So we are trying to get aggressive and we're going to try to, try to get John Collins here to Minnesota. Carly Towns is 30 years old and I'm really trying to get this man a ring here in Minnesota. So I don't really want to waste his time too much longer. So John Collins will be an upgrade at the power forward spot. I do love McDaniels, but if we can bring in John Collins, I think that'll be an excellent addition. So just like that. John Collins is the brand new power forward on the scene. We had to do something to be aggressive. And we have a couple of guys we're going to be able to bring back as well. So 
Uh, pretty happy with that. Obviously, it sucks. We trade our first round picks. We won't even worry about the draft anymore. Uh, Coleman, I'll accept. And Livingston, welcome back. Qualifying offers. Uh, Vucevic and Dyson Daniels. Two guys I know that we were going to have to, you know, bring back pay or whatever. So, um, and then no other free agents. So, Dyson Daniels lost $22 million on the open market, which... You know, we don't know what his future looks like. Obviously, he's not in the league yet, but, you know, you could see a scenario where maybe he breaks out and some team would be willing to pay him that. But I would like to have him back if possible. So, Daniels, Lonzo Ball, Anthony Edwards. So, I think this will be the first crazy decision we might have to make with Dyson Daniels. Let's see if anybody's willing to pay him a lot of money. And like I said, there is going to be a team that might do it. So, Dyson Daniels is asking for $22 million. No one's offered it yet, which is good. I guess uh, he's not even interested in signing with us. That guy isn't, but... I guess we should be looking. So uh, Dyson Daniels, I want back. Backup point guard wise, we just traded Alondez Williams and already he is uh, out here. I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Wait, did, I guess the Hawks just like released him or something. I don't know. But we're going to get Trey Jones, I guess, out of Duke. Tyus Jones used to play here in Minnesota. So we'll get Trey Jones. And then I might just wait on Daniels. But other than that, I think we have a full rotation, right? So yeah, I think we do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, we just need Daniels back. And we'll have a full rotation. Vukovic might be forced to come back as well. So Daniels has not got an offer yet. He'll be, oh, there it is. 10 year, 10 million. I'll do that. That's not a big deal. So we'll match that. Nice bench piece. And got a new head coach. We brought in John Collins. Like this has got to be the year we win a championship. This has to be it. Because it, it doesn't get doesn't get better than this. We, you know, we brought a new head coach. Got aggressive with bringing in John Collins here in Minnesota. So I think this is the year that it has to be, you know, get done. I don't think we'll have any other better opportunity. So here it is, man. Kevin Durant wins MVP. Alex Lloyd wins Rookie of the Year. Washington Six, man, Yasfin's player. Cisco is your most improved. Lamelo and Lonzo is your All NBA first team. Lavar Lavar Ball would be so proud. Uh, but hey, we got aggressive. We're the first seed again. Has led to nothing. Imagine your team being the first seed for like the next last the next or last five seasons, and you just didn't do anything. You didn't win a championship either time. That just would be so disappointing. But regardless, I mean, like I said, the roster has, it, it hasn't got any better. This has got to be the year we get it done. So similar to the play in Portland Trailblazers. Again, we've faced them a couple times. They have Donovan Mitchell here now and Jamal Murray. Wow. This is a definitely weird looking Blazers team, but somebody current round against the Blazers. And we are, if we lose to them, I was about to say, if we lose in the first round, man, I don't know. We might have to blow this team up. Seven Curry, Clay Thompson, Koa Pete, Isaac, Sabonis, Guy Clark, Osman Garuba, somebody current round at the Warriors and we're gonna lose in six in the second round man wow wow okay that might lead to something for us it is not working we've tried everything we've possibly could and it is just not leading to a championship something's got to give something's got to give now so we've gone to so many second round appearances first seed appearances it has led to absolutely nothing so um something has got to change this offseason i don't know what it's gonna be but we got to do something. Do we trade Carly Towns? We get crazy like that. Maybe pick up a couple picks for Towns and start the rebuild. I don't know, man. He has got one year left on his contract, which is why I'm kind of leaning towards maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do a little bit of a retool around Anthony Edwards a little bit because this is just not working the way we wanted it to. So I think this will be our first overhaul of the roster. So I think we're going to do that. Towns got one year left on his contract. I think it's important we take advantage of that now. So the first trade we're going to make is probably seeing Carly Towns over to the Houston Rockets. We're going to be getting J.D. Davis in a 2028 first round pick. I would like to get more picks from them if possible. Obviously, it's kind of hard to be realistic in a superstar trade like Carly Towns. You just never get the amount of picks you would probably get in real life. But I'm going to offer this. They only want a 2027 return. They'll give me three. Yeah, let's do that. Carly Towns, uh, you know, kind of forget about the 2027 pick. But 2028, 2031 for J.D. Davidson. And that is going to be our first crazy move. Moving on from Carly Towns, bringing J.D. Davidson as a new backcourt with Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is safe, obviously. Everyone else is very available. So we're probably going a little bit younger here. That's basically what the plan is. We're going to be going a little bit younger for the next couple of years. Obviously, we have like, I don't know, I think we have like five more years left this rebuild. So uh, we're getting younger and we're going to try to, you know, win with these next few guys we bring in. The next move we're going to be making is sending Lonzo Ball over to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Josh Giddy. One thing, I guess I have to include that guy in the trade. Okay, so I was about to say, one thing I would like to get is some picks as well. Just kind of stack up on the first round picks, if possible. See if they would be willing to part ways with a couple picks. Obviously, Oklahoma City protects their picks, but uh, let's see if they would accept this. They do not. What about for maybe one pick? Would you accept it then? They don't. Okay, 
I guess we'll just go back to the original trade. They obviously want to change it up, but we'll just go back to the original trade. We bring in Josh Giddy. The reason why we bring in Josh Giddy is because Giddy can move to small forward. And like I said, he's kind of on the same timeline as Davidson and Edwards. So we're kind of building a same timeline, 24, 25, 26 year old timeline. So uh, obviously that moves to Andrew, that's going to move OG and Anobi. John Collins is going to be somebody we'll probably move on from as well. So still more moves to be made. So we're trading John Collins to the Oklahoma City Thunder as well and getting Jalen Duran. We're also including a 2028 first round pick, but this is basically Carly Towns replacement. Obviously, Jalen Duran is not the best offensive player like Towns is, but gets us a 91 overall center. Something that's really important, obviously, for this file because, you know, things are going crazy now. Everybody's getting better. Then last but not least, it's going to be OG on Anobi. So, I mean, at this point, I'm probably just looking for some depth trades or maybe we can get a starter here as well. Patrick Baldwin wouldn't actually, Patrick Baldwin actually might be the move here 24 years of age and that'd be a brand new power forward for us a bonus as well and i think i'm going to go ahead and make that patch ball one trade from the knicks we are trading another first here we've uh, picked up a couple though obviously from some other trades so just like that our brand new roster well let's go straight past the draft go straight to player options so things are going to look a little bit different around here but we'll accept both of these guys then the qualifying offers we have chris Livingston and vucevic then uh for free agency we have lamello ball Livingston, and dyson daniels which i would like all of them back but i don't think we'll be able to afford all of them so our brand new roster is kind of like jd davidson trey jones you got anthony edwards you got josh giddy you got patrick baldwin and then you have nas reed and you have jalen duran so we pretty much have a not a full rotation we need shooting guard small forward power forward or two of them so um we're probably not gonna be able to afford livingston or dyson daniels who are, are unrestricted dyson daniels will just be i think we can go over the cap and sign him which might have to be the move actually so we're gonna go over the cap and sign dyson daniels or and uh, I don't want to get into hard cap too much. So that's why I'm kind of being opt or a little hesitant. But uh, we are going to sign uh, Dyson Daniels. And I think I'll wait on Chris Livingston. That's basically going to be it. So yeah, with that, Chris Livingston coming back on his qualifying offer, hopefully, will probably be uh, what I do. Or do we? can we secure him long term? He wants a big contract. But I think we've given him this. Uh, he will obviously be like really expensive and we'll get hard cap soon. So Chris Livingston will accept and uh, get Chris Livingston back. And uh, here we go, man. And, you know, kind of a more reinvented Timberwolves roster. Will this still lead to the first seed? I'm not sure. But we got to the first seed so many times, never led to anything. So a reinvented roster has led to the second seed in the West. So I don't know if that will lead to anything as far as playoff success. Edwards and Davidson led the way. 17 from Durant, 16 from Livingston, 13 from Daniels, and then 13 from Baldwin. And the third team from Giddy. So here we go, man. Obviously, the roster has gotten better throughout the simulation. So it'll be tough no matter what. Somebody current around against Memphis who don't have John Moran anymore. Is that right? Wow. Okay. John Moran is not a Grizzly anymore. So we lost game one, but we ended up beating them at seven. That was kind of scary, but we got, you know, took care of business here. The Thunder who have Lonzo Ball, we obviously traded Lonzo and Collins to the Oklahoma City Thunder. So we made them a lot better in a way, but I don't know, man. Let's see what happens. Game one, we're up one to zero. That's a good start. They even it up. We're up two to one. We're up three to one. And we beat them in five. So we're in the West Conference Finals again. We are playing the first seeded Phoenix Suns who have Bronny James Jr., Kenny Chandler, Mikael Bridges, Johnson, Aiden Bradley, Patrick Williams, and MJ Rice. So this could be tough. Game one, we're up one to zero. Okay. They even it up. They're up two to one. We even it up. Can we go up three to two? Yes, we can. Can we make it to the finals? No, we're going to a game seven. This is going to be the biggest game seven of our lives because obviously we made the roster change. So if we lose this, not going to be a good look. Not going to be a good look whatsoever. So can we prevail and beat the Suns or are we going to lose and go home? And we do. We prevail. 119 and 107. Livingston was our leading scorer, uh, which is huge because game seven performance is averaging 19 points in the playoffs, which is big time. And now I get to play Orlando Magic. So. They have Imani Bates, Cole Anthony, Franz Wagner, Chet Holmgren, Caleb Houston. Game one, they're up one to zero. We even it up though. They're up two to one. Dude, if we get another heartbreaker and we just lose, are we going to be able to force a game seven? Yes, we are. Let's go, baby. Game seven. This is what we wanted. Game seven. Let's simulate and let's see if we could do it. Come on, baby. Let's get it. Please, let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Come on, man. Oh, this is close. This is really freaking close. 114, 115, 119, 120, 127. I think we've got this secured. Let's go. Finally won a championship with the Minnesota Timberwolves. J.D. Davidson is your finals MVP. The year of 2028, we finally freaking won. So I think with that, 
Uh, since we got to simulate till the year 2032, I'm actually just going to keep simulating until we get to the year 2032 because uh, the roster is not going to change that much. We won a championship finally. Let's see if we can win a couple more though. Obviously, we should have won way more, but it never worked out, which is why I don't think I could ever complete the Bill Russell challenge, by the way. But um, we'll go straight into you know keeping the roster relatively the same and we'll go into this next season. So we made it back to playoffs in the year 2029. So let's go take a look at our stats real quick. And uh, then we'll go from there. 21, 21, 21, 21's across the board. Um, this year, I really don't care. Since we already made the, or we already won a championship, I'm just gonna click simulate playoffs. We beat the Mavericks in six, we beat the Suns, and we are into the NBA Finals, but we lose in seven to the Chicago Bulls. Almost could have been back-to-back -back championships, but unfortunately, it was not. So uh, we're gonna go straight and just feeling, like I said, the roster is gonna stay the same. So. Not really worried about all this. So we're going to just make the roster the same. We'll run it back again and see if we win it. The Quinn Snyder wins coach of the year still. So we are still very competitive in the year 2030. I think this next season will be the last one. So player stats wise, 22, 2016. I mean, we made it to the NBA finals last year. So so many playoffs and see if we could do that again. And we are going to six. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about the last year. We we won a championship in this video. It took us forever to do it, but I think I'm just going to end it off on there. We didn't go the full 10 years. I know that, but we're going to lose the first, the eighth seed. It's just time to hang it up, I think. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, definitely like if you want to see more of these. Obviously, we didn't go the full 10 years, and I apologize for that. But I think we succeeded what we wanted to succeed. We won a championship. Unfortunately, we didn't do it with Carnegie Towns, though, which sucks, but it is what it is. Thank you guys for watching. It's Crushables, and peace.